Uh, my entry into science came relatively late, that is relative to a lot of young people these days, because I wasn't exposed to biology in the uh, small town in Quebec in which I grew up, where I had a fabulous education, but biology wasn't taught. And what happened is I went to McGill University in Montreal without having any idea what I wanted to do. And I decided I would take a biology course to see what it was all about. And then I was smitten. I knew I wanted to do research, but I didn't know in what area I wanted to do it in. And I decided I wanted to understand how the immune response began. How is this immune system that can do so many things driven into action? So I decided to go to New York at the Rockefeller University to study this problem. We struggle a little what to call our new cells, but their most distinctive feature was that the cells we had discovered had many processes. They're constantly probing the environment, looking for all the challenges that the immune system has to deal with. And then when they see the challenge, they have to take it into the body and teach the immune system what to do. So this probing movement, maybe which we should have called them probing cells, because they probe for challenges and they probe for the immune cells that have to respond. The microscope was really important in the discovery of dendritic cells. But what we were trying to do um, was to understand how the immune response begins. And we had to move away from the emphasis of the laboratory in which I was training to an immune organ to make this discovery. And there was one system that people had discovered before us on how immune responses were generated in the test tube. But something was missing. Something was missing to get that immune system, that immune response to work in the test tube. So we looked at the immune cells with the microscope. And there we spotted something that nobody had ever seen or taken note of before. These strange probing or dendritic cells and that was the start. Our most recent work is to take advantage of the science of dendritic cells. What we're trying to do is develop vaccines in a new way. Vaccines are a real success story in medicine. For example, they prevented polio. Um, but we need vaccines in many other settings, notably to prevent AIDS, but also to fight cancer and many other diseases. So we're trying to use, to exploit, to harness what we've learned about dendritic cells to make better vaccines and in a new way, vaccines that will be composed of very chemically defined substances and will be very safe, very specific, and very incisive in terms of what they do. The dendritic cell helps us understand the many diseases that involve the immune system. How does an autoimmune disease like lupus or multiple sclerosis, how does it begin? How does allergy begin? What goes wrong? How can we fight cancer better? How can we make vaccines against infections and cancers and other uh, challenges that the immune system is facing? So I think the dendritic cell discovery will really bear upon the future of vaccine design. <laughs>